In this video, we are going to prepare a buffer solution and we are going to test it um, for uh, it, how it reacts to an acid and a base being added. This video will focus on the addition of an acid and we are going to compare it to water, which will not have a buffer system in it. So I've got about 100 milliliters of water in both beakers right now, and I'm going to measure the pH with a pH probe, which is in there. And I'll show you right now, we're reading a pH value for our buffer solution beaker, which it just has water in it, um, of 6.53. It's gonna be the pH sensor number one. And pH sensor number two is in our water only beaker. And that is now reading 6.19. So they're close, they're a little bit different. Um, and now we're gonna go ahead and make our buffer solution and we'll check the pH along the way. So right now it's just water. And what I need to do is add sodium bicarbonate and carbonic acid. Carbonic acid needs to be made with uh, CO2. It's not shelf stable. And so I'm going to generate carbonic acid by blowing carbon dioxide through a straw into my solution until the pH comes down to below six. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna bubble like this. I'm gonna do that for two to three minutes. I'm gonna pause this video so you don't have to watch bubbling for two to three minutes. I've now blown um, carbon dioxide through um, a straw for two minutes, and I've brought the pH of my uh, water down below six. So now the water that'll be um, my buffer eventually has carbonic acid in it, and it has a pH of 5.89, while my water that has had nothing done to it is still at about 6.47, 6.5. So I'm gonna set this pH meter aside and pull out this straw. So the next step is we're going to add 0.2 grams, roughly, of sodium bicarbonate to our solution. And sodium bicarbonate is just baking soda. Um, and so I've teared my balance, it's at zero. I'm gonna add a little bit, and it brings me up to, oh, wow, nailed it, close enough. 0 0.232 grams, and let me show it to you. So 0 0.232 grams uh, of sodium bicarbonate will be added to our solution. I'm just gonna dump it in and use a stirring rod to stir it. Close enough, I'm sure. That's so gonna stir vigorously. And I'm gonna stir until that white powder, the sodium bicarbonate, dissolves. And then we'll check our pH again. And so I've basically added the conjugate weak base to the weak acid, carbonic acid that I made by blowing CO2 into the water. The CO2 dissolves in the water, then reacts with it in a reversible reaction to form carbonic acid. Similarly, carbonic acid in water will slowly decompose to carbon dioxide, which is why we have to make it every single time. It, it doesn't store on a shelf. All right, that is dissolved. I'm going to take these materials away and show you the pH that we have now. So where this was at below 6 before, our buffer solution now has a pH of about 7.5. It's now 7.6. So we're gonna start, um, we're gonna test our uh, buffer solutions um, and see the change in pH as we add a strong acid. So we have our buffer here on the right, we have just plain water on the left. Remember pH sensor one is our buffer solution and pH sensor two is our water. Um, I now have a concentrated uh, acid, hydrochloric acid. Um, close to, I think, about 1.5 to 2 molar. Um, and we're going to add this dropwise to both solutions and see how it responds. Um, so I'm going to just go drop by drop, two drops at a time. All right, we'll do two drops in our water, followed by two drops in our buffer solution and we'll stir.
let's take a look at our pH up close. So that buffer solution pH hasn't changed very much, 7.5 about, but look at our water. It went from 6.5 all the way down to 3.3. That's about a pH three change. That's huge um, just from those two drops. And so we can see that right away, our buffer is resisting a change to its pH as we add this strong acid and the the unbuffered solution is not. So I'm adding two more drops to each of these solutions and stirring. And now I'm just gonna keep adding two drops and then showing you the pH and adding two drops and showing you the pH until we uh, hopefully hit uh, the buffer capacity of the buffer solution. And you can see now our water is all the way down to 2.75. We've essentially hit the buffer capacity of water in just a few drops. Um, and our pH for our buffer solution is 7.27 after adding four drops of our strong acid. And so it is maintaining its pH. All right, I'm gonna add another two drops to each. And stir. We see a greater change now to the pH of our buffer solution. It's now at seven. I would not call this hitting its buffer capacity quite yet. We we're hoping to see a, a dramatic change. We're at 2.5 for the pH of our water. And sorry, 7.08 for the pH of our buffer solution. All right, two drops in each, and stir. We have a pH of 6.0. Let's give it a minute. Our water isn't changing very much. So our water has a pH of 7.44, and the pH of our buffer solution is now at 6.90. I'm going to add two more drops to each. And our buffer solution pH is now about 6.75 and climbing. Um, and our water solution is 2.35. It looks like 6.79 is what I would go with for our buffer solution. Two more drops out of each. Our buffer solution is at 6.68 and our water is at 2.26. Two drops have been added to both beakers and we're stirring. pH sensor one, which is our buffer solution, is reading a pH of 6.58. And pH sensor two, which is our water, is reading a pH of 2.19. I have added two drops to each. I now have a pH um, for my buffer solution of about 6.44 and a pH of 2.13 for my water. I've added two more drops of acid to both beakers. I have a pH for my buffer solution of 6.30 and a pH for my water of 2.08. Added two more drops to both beakers.
And I'm seeing a pH of 2.04 still for the water and a pH of 6.23 for my buffer solution. The water is not changing very much after it's extremely dramatic change at the very beginning of the experiment. And our buffer solution is slowly changing. I've added two drops to each beaker. I have a pH for my buffer solution of 6.13 and a pH for my water of 1.99. Now a pH of two is pretty, pretty uh, light in color. At this point, rather than continuing to go dropwise, um, I'd like to stop and compare really quickly their colors um, and then see how many drops it takes to get to the buffer solution of, um, or to get the buffer uh, capacity to be reached on our buffer. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this blue indicator and hopefully you can see that on screen. It's increasing my pH a little bit. Look, it's very pink. Um, whereas if I add it to my buffer solution, it should probably be slightly purple at this point, or blue. Yeah, it's still looking very blue. So now let's compare as we try to reach the buffer capacity for our buffer. We're at a very acidic solution for our water already. Um, and now I'm going to set our pH reader again. So having that there kind of changes my lighting quite a bit. All right, I'm getting more acid and we're just going to see what it takes so hopefully you've counted the, you've got to count the number of drops so far. I'm going to go two drops at a time and stir. So here we go, one, two. And remember we're looking at the pH of sensor one, which has now come down to uh, 5.7-ish, 5.8. So three, four drops have been added since our last one. Five, six. We're at a pH of 5.7. Seven, eight. We're at a pH of 5.5. Nine, ten. We dropped all the way down to 4.78. 11, 12, we might be reaching our buffer capacity. Oh, uh, we just jumped down to about 2.9 and we see a color change. So after the, I believe that was the 12th drop, um, we are now down to 2.9 and we have reached, we've definitely hit our buffer capacity. We saw a rapid change of about over a pH, whole pH or more, um, and we see this color change. So here's um, 13 and 14, I believe, I hope. <laughs> 15, 16, 17, 18. And 18 drops brings us down to about a pH of two just like the water, um, additional. And so we saw a large change occur with our buffer capacity um, when, when it was reached. And we, that means we just basically expended all of that buffer. Um, the, there was no longer any weak base for our strong acid to react with. And so it, the, the solution really stopped neutralizing the um, acid that was added. And we saw a dramatic pH change.